Hi and welcome back. So a new study out of Japan has shown that a common vitamin normally deficient in many people can be now used as a preventative for treatment of two different types of cancer. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of Japan has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by the Shibara Institute of Technology that covers a study which was published in the American Journal of Cancer Research and looked into vitamin D as a way to prevent two separate types of cancer. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. According to recent estimates, over 140 million people from 50 countries around the globe are regularly exposed to arsenic through their drinking water. This exposure level significantly exceeds the guideline value of 10 micrograms per litre, as stipulated by the World Health Organization. It's an established fact that chronic arsenic exposure from drinking water causes a variety of cancers, including skin cancer. Unfortunately, there is a general scarcity of data on the underlying biological mechanisms that regulate arsenic-mediated carcinogenesis. Moreover, methods for the prevention and treatment of arsenic-mediated carcinogenesis thus far have remained elusive. Researchers at the Shibara Institute of Technology and the Nagoya University have recently been able to identify the underlying biological mechanisms of carcinogenesis inhibition. Using in vitro studies, the research team has been able to demonstrate how calcitriol, the activated form of vitamin D, inhibits arsenic-mediated carcinogenesis in certain types of skin cells known as keratinocytes. These skin cells are primarily found in the outermost layer of the skin known as the epidermis. It's a scientifically established fact that certain signaling molecules, those being kinase proteins, which control the fate of various biological processes, are strongly associated with tumour development. Professor Ichiro Yajima from the Department of Bioscience and Engineering at the Shibara Institute for Technology, who led the research, said, Our in vitro study in human non-tumorigenic HA cat skin keratinocytes showed that calcitriol, which is also known as activated vitamin D3 or 125-dihydroxy vitamin D3, inhibited arsenic-mediated anchorage independent growth with downregulations of cancer-related activation of several signaling pathways, including MEK, ERK12, and AKT, as well as activity of cell cycle. To clarify the relationship between arsenic uptake and calcitriol treatment, the researchers measured arsenic levels in HA cat cells treated with calcitriol using an inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometer. The results showed that arsenic levels in HA cat cells cultured with arsenic significantly decreased when these cells were treated with increasing doses of calcitriol. Dr. Masashi Kato, a study collaborator and a professor at the Department of Occupational and Environmental Health at Nagoya University in Japan, stated, Calcitriol significantly repressed arsenic uptake in HA cat cells with the regulation of expressions of aquaporin genes, AQP7, 9 and 10, which were modified by arsenic exposure. Vitamin D receptor expression was significantly increased by arsenic exposure, whereas calcitriol had no effect on the expression of the receptor. The researchers then checked to see if calcitriol had an inhibitory effect on arsenic-induced tumorigenesis in cells other than skin keratinocytes. To that end, they performed anchorage-independent growth assays using a human lung epithelial cell line called BEAS2B. The results of these assays were equally as astonishing. Arsenic-mediated anchorage-independent growth of BEAS2B cells treated with calcitriol was suppressed by 21.4 to 70%. This suggests 
the cancer trio's potential to suppress arsenic-induced tumorigenesis is not restricted to keratinocytes. Professor Ichiro Yajima went on to say that these results suggest that calcitriol suppresses arsenic-induced tumorigenesis not only in keratinocytes but also in other target cells including lung epithelial cells. Furthermore, the expression pattern of aquaporin genes involved in arsenic uptake, a critical step in arsenic-induced carcinogenesis, is significantly altered by calcitriol treatment. We therefore believe that activated vitamin D3 or calcitriol may contribute to the prevention and therapy for arsenic-mediated diseases, including cancer. It is an undisputable fact that environmental toxins such as arsenic contribute significantly to the development of life-threatening diseases such as cancer. However, it may take years, even decades, for cancer to develop from drinking arsenic-contaminated water. The current research clearly indicates that calcitriol could be used as a test compound for validating the safety and efficacy of activated vitamin D3 and or its analogues in preventing or treating arsenic triggered cancers. The researchers say that taking vitamin D3 in arsenic contaminated areas may reduce the risk of cancer development by five or ten years and help people to stay in good health for longer therefore increasing their health span. They also say this should be a welcome news for the millions of people forced to survive on polluted water around the world. If you're supplementing with vitamin D3 or you're thinking about it, then vitamin K2 must also be considered. There are two main forms of vitamin K. Vitamin K1, which is found in plant foods such as leafy greens, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, etc. Vitamin K1 prevents bleeding through the blood clotting coagulation cascade. And vitamin K2, which is found in some animal products and also some fermented foods. Vitamin K2 can be further divided into several different subtypes, the most important being MK4 and MK7. One of vitamin K2's most important functions is to regulate the calcium deposition that's afforded by vitamin D3. In other words, it promotes the calcification of our bones and our teeth, and it prevents the calcification of our soft tissues, such as our blood vessels, our heart and our kidneys. So if you do want to supplement with vitamin D3 and K2, where can you buy it? Of the big three, Pro Health Longevity at the moment does not sell a vitamin D3 and K2 combination. However, Renew Bioscience and Do Not Age both carry vitamin D3 and K2 and both offer the MyNMN 10% discount code at checkout. And there are links in the description below. These are affiliate links, so if you do use them, I will receive some remuneration from the company. And if you do use them, I'd like to say in advance, thank you very much indeed for your support. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've now got 10 videos in my vitamin D3 playlist. I'll try and remember to link it at the end, all showing positive outcomes for those people that stay within the sufficient range. As you know, vitamin D is not a, a vitamin, it's actually a hormone. And the blood test that you need to take to see what your levels are, very quick, and fairly inexpensive. If you are either deficient or insufficient, try to get more sunlight. If you can't do that, then you need to supplement. Uh, always do that under the direction of a doctor. Those of you that take a multivitamin, don't be tricked into thinking that you're covered because vitamin D is part of that multivitamin. Check because sometimes they are underdosed. Um, if they are underdosed, then you're going to need to supplement on top of that as well. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, Please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.